Right, Mr. Chairman. In terms of um, staff responses to the or oh, to the your deliberations on the actual um, <coughs> external submissions that have been received, we've really just gone through in the same um, order as you've received staff responses in, in uh, attachment three of agenda item seven, and have um, made recommendations as a if you like a starter for 10 on, e on each topic. Um, they're up on the screen and they're obviously um, uh, Leanne's in control of the keyboard so you can go ahead and make whatever changes you like to them but um, they're really just for you to um, go through and uh, identify your or make your decisions on each of those topic areas and in some cases there are obviously individual submissions where there's only one person made the point or it's a specific funding request and you'll see those as, as we come to them. But I've, we've just gone through them in the order of um, uh, that they've been made. Now, at the moment, the only uh, outstanding submitters who you haven't heard from um, are a couple that are related to biosecurity issues. So I would suggest that um, we, we skip that one when, when we get to it until you've, you've heard those, uh, their submissions later on after morning tea. But uh, every other one, because we have an apology from the Enviro Schools yeah, Enviro Schools are not here. Yeah. So um, everyone else, every other topic or every other submissions, all the other submissions, um, can, I believe, can now be considered collectively by you. Can you see that? We For can you? make either make the font bigger or make the screen bigger, but... Yeah. Perhaps a little bigger might be a help. Yeah. Perhaps through you, Mr Chairman, could... Ms. Lambert, could you just tell us how you where, where are we starting from again? I didn't pick okay. up from the. Could you go to um, agenda item seven, attachment three? Attachment three, which is the yep. officers' responses. Yep. So I'm just go basically going page. through it page by page. Yep. No, I've got it now. Okay. I, yep. You just lost me at the start. <laughs> Question on the staff responses, and that is um, considering. Um, one of the alternatives is planting in a, in a crop that um, has a funding stream through um, the Manuka honey. Uh, but there's a, a comment in that that it will be a nurse crop for indigenous vegetation. At that point, presumably, you lose mm. your Manuka honey advantage, do you? Yes. Well, so we. Yeah. What's, what's the lifespan of, a, of an income round, round this? 20 years? Mm. Um, don't know at this stage. We are in a learning phase, but our anticipation is that yeah, the dilution um, would be sufficient to to reduce the high UMF values after 20, 25 years. But yeah, so I mean, it would be round about the equivalent of a yeah. rotational crop. Mm. <coughs> yep. Well, a bit shorter, but yes, yeah, mm. in that order. Yeah. Mm. Mm, thank you. So that's the thinking at this stage. But yeah, it's it's. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Mr Chairman? Well, Mr Chairman, I, 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 my personal view is we should accept the submission that the Trees on Farm project goes ahead immediately, so I'd move that. We, we um, accept the submission that they say that the Trees on Farm should go ahead. Clarification um, with that, yeah. Mr Chairman. Um, uh, presumably that, that is all cost out, the rates increase. Yeah, the rates will increase. No, Can we get sorry. an indication of the size of the rate increase? Well, there's no, no. indication here. Give me a second. Council has signalled what his motion will be, but before we get there, Councillor Curtin, do you have a question? <coughs> I'm sorry, I should have had this figure in front of me. What, what, what's our total spend this year? In 2013-14? On? On trees and ground. Uh, you know, is, what, what is the... Ex we've planted 55 hectare. And we've got a, 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 yep. a proposed planting of 80 hectare. Yeah. We, we, we have budget 100,000 this financial year and 100,000 next financial year. We are doing the whole lot this winter. So we will, that's, that's the objective. So we we'll spent 100,000 in current year? We will be by the end of June. And then we want to spend next year's by July? Yeah, in July, yeah. 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 And, and it, just so we're clear, in its entirety, the full thirty million dollars, whatever it was. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> Laps is due to no seconder. Presumes the chair, I can't second it. Can I third it? <laughs> <laughs> so any, any questions, um, any other questions before we get to any recommendations? Councillor McGregor. Order, please, over here. Um, oh, sorry, thank you. In the first paragraph, that complement livestock and agriculture systems and protect the environment. And if how, how many hectares have we got of uh, vulnerable hill country in Hooks? About 170 thousand hectares and all due respects to growing uh, manuka for honey I've got nothing against that it's not complementary to livestock systems or pastoral production um, and I, I believe that uh, we've got a massive challenge here and we've got to stand back and look at new systems that will be will inspire the livestock farmer and um, I've got no simple answer for it, but I, I just don't believe that we're really seriously facing up to this problem. And uh, talk of manuka for honey or um, uh, planting natives on hillsides is incompatible to livestock farming. And there we are, 170,000 hectares of pasture land owned by and farmed by farmers who require uh, um, pasture production as the raw material. So, you, so your point... Councillor? Well, my point is that I'm question. Quite, I'm not quite sure how we're going to approach this, but I'm unhappy that um, we're not going to make the progress that the problem demands. Councillor Rice? Chair, and I just point out to my colleagues that it may be helpful if um, uh, were, uh, that tomorrow that the um, Environmental and Services Committee meeting there is a, a uh, presentation of by uh, Nathan Sharp and Campbell Leakey on the ongoing project uh, around trees going forward over the next period of time. and There may be some answers um, that they're seeking come out of that discussion tomorrow, but uh, there is a, a full agenda item on this very subject. Okay. Any other questions? Councillor Douglas. Mr Chairman, I, I just wondered then what does the first paragraph under comments actually mean in that case? Is that partly what Councillor Rose is referring to and what Councillor Gilbert Gilbertson would want to see, accelerate it. And I wonder if, in response to both of those points, whether we can simply, uh, in, in the comments up there, uh, uh, put a three in there, simply say that we have asked staff to report urgently uh, in respect to those words there, which picks up the point, because I don't think you can actually add with due respect, 30 million, uh, out like that. But equally, um, I'm hearing Councillor McGregor say there's a critical thing that has to be addressed. Do, do we need that level of, um, uh, well, can someone ask, ask, answer that question? Do we need that level of explicit um, language in this recommendation? I mean, yeah, I, helpful. Um, well, uh, up to you, but there is, has been a commitment by staff to get back to you by 2014 um, with a whole range of things and that that is in train in within that program yeah, yeah. it's helpful and, and it's yes. also useful information for the submitters mm. Mr. Chairman, I'm prepared to move one and take three out that's to going in, and instead of that move, continues to seek alternative funding sources, <coughs> including use of the RLS to encourage immediate progress in establishing trees on farm, but makes no change to the annual plan. Mr. Chairman, if the mover would care to suggest to take an amendment, and I'd be happy to second it, um, and seeks the staff report in 2013, and that just with first respect, that puts the point right on the staff to make a priority of it, if it is. Move it. Um, Mr Chairman, mm. this is the operational plan for the for the council for the annual plan, I think. Mm. Yeah, I actually think that that type of um, is, is more appropriate within the ENS meeting. I think I think the answer here is that we're still working as far as we can, but there's no financial change on the plan. 
But Mr Chair, we are making decisions in response to submissions and submitters deserve to be told what the Council intends to do and if it's embodied in a resolution then they'll find out about it. If they don't, if it's not in there, um, they might find out in the letter the staff writes them, but they may not. Anyway, it's, it's with the mover at the moment. And we don't have a seconder for that. Um, establishing who's on phone. Let's let's get but makes no change to the other Is there a seconder for that? <laughs> Wish to speak. Uh, does the chair not one of the submitters actually came up with an alternate funding source? Um, none of them put up their hands and said, please put up our rates to do this. And um, unless we can find money from somewhere, um, and that's what we've instructed staff, we know that there is a paper coming back, and perhaps Mr. Um, our Councillor um, Douglas hasn't followed the talk on this in the recent times, but we have been stressing the urgency of getting back some information as to where we might alternately funded. I've identified the RLS and use of that as one of the schemes and that's because we, we know that there is money there for incentive uh, to incentivise planting. We do not have the ability at the moment to wholesale plant on trees unless we have a funding source. It either has to come out of a forestry consideration or it has to come out of a carbon consideration or an alternative suggested here is the Manuka funny, honey um, but at the moment, incentivising is the only alternative yeah. we've got to it. And hopefully when we get this um, paper tomorrow, which um, uh, we've all got the agenda for, we'll actually see and then be able to get a better idea of timetable. But I'm not at this yeah. stage prepared to say, yes, I'm going to pluck a figure out of the year within this, within this time because the impact is going to be on rates. Yeah, Mr Chairman, um, last July I think it was, um, I couldn't run the pumps on the Tukitok River for the whole of July because it was discoloured mud. So if I turned the pumps on, I'd be pumping mud, which indicates to me, as Councillor McGregor says, there's a crisis at 160,000 hectares of whatever. So, and that, um, the first flood was in 1863. Ever since then, there's been, it's been an ongoing situation. We talked about trees on farms, what, two or three years ago. We're now saying, let's think about 2014, bring a report back. We're just going into another one of these 10 or 15 years later, nothing happens. So I think we should do something. So I'm not going to support this. I think we should get on with it. And we've been talking about it for years. And um, we'll be talking about it another three or four years and worrying about the rates while the, even the, the mud slides down the Tukutuk as usual. Yeah. 